way to uh, monetize value for the benefit of the authority and taxpayers. And, and build into the development the maintenance of this thing somehow. I don't know. I mean, I just. Is, is there bonding for about a million? Is there a bond? Yes, yeah. Is there a bond? yes yeah. yeah. How long is the bond? I'm not talking about payments for the bond. I'm no. talking about a waterproofing bond. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see somebody's but there's more, there's more going on here than just that number. Right? Let's be honest. That, the, 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 the moisture may have been the catalyst to create the problem. But I think what we're ending up with is a just a better quality asset. And we do not anticipate significant maintenance expenditures going forward. We maintain the uh, amenity the museum itself for the, for the uh, or the memorial, if you will, uh, or for the community and for the city. And among the alternatives, that just seems to be the best one, and that's kind of where we are. But we've got to vote on it. It will require a majority. Other questions or comments? Um, have all these contractors worked for us before? Uh, no, actually, Nicholson Galloway has not worked for us before. I did not. Uh, but, every, but I think everybody else has. So we have to do that. We're attempting to do is to get out and, and kind of get some more diversity into and our into our the, the big list. Experience that and the Good. Okay. Thank you. Well, what, it seems to be a specialized kind of thing. It, right? it, it so, is, and so they they have to look at what uh, subcontract work is available that they can they can utilize um, uh, MWB contractors for. They have um, done an extensive amount of outreach. We have checked with them on their outreach. We are trying to work with them um, more to see if there is any other um, component of the work that we could then you know assign to an MWB uh, contractor. They are at now at they are at twenty percent um, in there, um, which is better than any of the other ones that the key thing. So they actually came up higher than the other ones. So. Did the uh, contractor uh, uh, testing below the existing membrane to confirm that the structure itself has not been compromised by the water we, penetration? We, we did that uh, testing earlier really this year. Uh, mm -hmm. We had uh, testing first coming in and we, uh, the conclusion was that there is no currently no structural damage, but it is at moderate to high risk for future corrosion. Um, so it, it, it's not going to get better. It's going to progressively get worse. Can you get the contract in the contract by the risk, any risk associated with the load existing membrane? Because we, we, you know, the chairman asked the question, change orders, right? So you remove the membrane. I don't want to hear when we remove the membrane that there's another $2 million in right. concrete work required. I really don't want to hear that. It seems like a money. Right? It, I mean, I, I don't know that we can 100% um, um, prevent there being um, a, uh, a uh, field condition that has not been identified that then becomes um, uh, visible when the membrane is. Uh, removed. I don't think there's any indication based on the testing that's been done thus far that there is any um, any additional damage that would be of any magnitude of what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Rather than us do this, we can't get the contractor to, in, in, in some advanced contracted way, give him the resources to do his own probe and buy the, buy the risk. Going to come at a cost. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I'd always right. rather look at the possibility of fixed price arrangement and and let give the uh, contractor the opportunity that was the point was to take a, a look at what's there and feel comfortable that he's going to take all of this. We may not be able to get that done until we are in the middle of the project. That's my concern. Is because we would have to take part the. The, the, the exception of the tunnel, this is a concrete block, correct? A reinforced concrete block. So it's cut on the side, obviously, there's space on the edge. 
there's void underneath. Right, the Dodge claim on grades, the forward half of the street is slab on grades. About halfway up to become, there's a two mechanical bolts, which is where the sound system usually goes. So there is space underneath. And that's what we're seeing most of the time. But did you have the foundation, generally speaking, you can have a foundation fairly well examined to determine what the condition of it is. Unless I'm assuming the structure above grade is what concerns me, is that there's a concrete structure above grade that it's hard to imagine has taken a lot of damage, which is why I almost think it's just a good idea to test the contractor and see if they're willing to take a look, a closer look in advance, and just as you did, right, and satisfy themselves that they don't have an issue, and if so, then maybe there's a discussion to be had. Mr. Chairman, based on what you said, I'm proposing that we table this, and let me finish. I understand that Vivian is hired by the staff, but, and just get some more information, because it just seems to me that this could potentially be a financial, I mean, I already think the number is ridiculous, but putting that aside, I don't really, I'm confident that we completely know the whole story, and I'm just proposing that in what the U.S. Department of Labor. I don't know, because I will tell you, to my personal knowledge, and involvement in these discussions over months and months and months, that this has been reviewed and looked at and understood, I think, in a very granular way. Now, we can have a dispute about whether there's a halfway step of let's spend $150,000 or $200,000, some number that we would come up with based on consultation, to lower the risk of what we believe is an unlikely event, but certainly a possible event, when they're partial way through the contract, we come into some condition that in good faith nobody ever knew about. The problem with the delay, well, we can talk about the calendar, but we're already going to lose the season. And if this drifts and we're going to go through next year with the same conditions, we don't think it's usable, and then we'll end up losing the 2017 season. Now, let's hypothesize for a moment, nightmare, it's three months in, they drill some hole somewhere, and we have a million or $2 million problem that nobody knew about. 30, 40, some huge bad thing happens, but we knew it today. The question that would arise is, would that cause us to take a different course of action than the one we're taking, and the course of action we're taking is designed to preserve the memorial. We don't like the cost. We do not like the cost. But to preserve the memorial. If we were sitting, we had bids up to $9.5 million. If we were sitting here and the low bid was 6.8 instead of 5.8, as an example, would we be voting it down? I would argue no. So my inclination would be to move. I think you heard the concerns. And what I am supportive of, maybe we should bring these guys back in. Maybe I should sit in a meeting and let's bounce them off the walls and identify what they believe is the maximum exposure that the authority has. If we hear something that is material, then we'll respond to that. This authorization allows but does not mandate the execution of the contract. So given the concerns that I've heard from the members, I'm willing to do a little more work, but I'd hate like heck to see this thing through. And also just on the timing of this, we were originally thinking of actually working through the winter and that would cost us prohibitive in order to do it in case it occurs earlier. So it's not that we want to prohibit it. It's just that we think that the timing of this is to have them start the scoping out of what the deconstruction will look like in the earlier winter months and then with construction starting so that we will only lose a season and not be in a position where 
we have to keep going into next winter when you're in a deal with the fact that we're either going to have to cover it or, we, or we're going to have to cover it in the mid, in other words, to, to finish yeah. off the work, which will then make the cost prohibitive. I mean, we did look to do it actually at an accelerated rate, and we did decide not to go forward with that. If you look at the bids, we actually asked for them to, the contractors to scope out what it would cause to, cost to enclose it, and it was just astronomical. Yeah. Well, what, what, what due diligence uh, from a design standpoint and, and the current condition standpoint have we done? Because that's a little unclear to me. Maybe some of the testing has been done. Exhausted. I think that, we, I think that um, in terms of everything that we can know at this point, um, we, we have a uh, conclusion that's based upon our engineers' um, assessment. Did they, they did probes. Um, and we did um, a series of testing, uh, continuity testing on the rebar, uh, linear. Is the contractor willing to give us some type of contract based upon that due diligence and those reports? I, I, think, that, I think that's what, we're, uh, what I'm hearing that we're now. Let me say something. That's right. May I? Okay, so we're, 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 we're talking, what we're talking about now is uh, important. But we're getting into a realm of what should be a discussion, a negotiated discussion with the contractor, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to get, we, 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 we would want to have that, we would want to make sure the staff had the benefit of that negotiation. Well, Without well, it being well, well, played well, out on public record, let me just no, finish, right? We had your lens out, right? We can, are you willing to attend that meeting? Sure, we've had, we, when Anthony and I have direct experience in issues like this and right. making sure that right. we try to look ahead and to, to, to address your concern, look ahead and be sure that we're not opening the door for something much more diff you know, difficult to deal with than what we think we have right now. And I mean, Lester's who's fully able to join with me and you and sit with these, the staff and the contractor and try to get the best deal we can get. Okay. Right? I think we'd still like the authorization. Right. Yeah, get the authorization and then start to, you know, start to have more. Okay. Can I call a vote? Do we have a motion? I motion. Do we have a motion? Second. I want, I want a dissenting vote on something. I don't know that I've ever had it. Have we ever had a dissenting vote? I must be a genius. What? Uh, no, I, no. In favor. Oh, I, I need everybody. Forget what I said. No, no, I don't think so, Bobby. Wait, but we have a quorum, and the quorum can't act? The quorum has to act in unanimity yes. if we don't have an access. <laughs> Based on what Don said, I, I will not decide to I appreciate it. Okay. Carrie. Now, for all those members who thought that we have time constraints this morning, we've only done one of four of these. My meeting got canceled on the year. First I called and rearranged my whole day. And then he stands the push. Okay. Lyro. Program and Construction Management, the Police Memorial and North Cove Marina. Gwen, tell us this in 25 words or less. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, for those of you who were on the board um, at the time, you'll recall that, that uh, during Superstorm Sandy, um, our um, below-grade electrical vaults were uh, submerged and the equipment was destroyed. Um, we have um, two below-grade um, electrical vaults um, that are in question today that we're talking about. One uh, services the south side of the marina, the other services the um, uh, police memorial and the playground um, that's uh, above the police memorial. We looked uh, at the time at um, replacing the electrical equipment for the police memorial vault in time. However, it was the board's um,